What's going on YouTube? Effect Records here. Today I'm bringing you a video on a couple things that I'm going to be doing such as removing the uh, short rim intake as well as the battery from my O3 Lancer to Evo conversion build. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So yeah, let's get into it. And I'm still waiting on the blow off valve to come in the mail, but anyway, let's go ahead and get started. First off, I got a coupler. So this basically goes on the uh, compressor side of the turbo housing, which converts it into a three inch uh, size diameter for the intercooler piping. So that's what that's for. And then here is the turbo. It's an M12, which I think most eBay turbos are an M12 that I've seen. And it's a 0.50. And I will post a link in uh, all these in the description below of where I got them. So, uh, yeah. Now, this is an internal wastegate model because the one on the 08 was an external. And I had problems with the external wastegate getting it to fit properly. And then also I wanted the, uh, the wastegate downpipe thing connected to the exhaust downpipe. And it was just a mess, basically. Like, it wasn't really a mess. I mean, I got it. But it was a lot harder than I'd like. So like right now, I just went with an internal to try that out. Then I have the intercooler. And then in this bag, let's go ahead and open it. That's all the uh, drain lines and everything for the oil lines for the return line and the oil in for the turbo. So that's what those are for basically. And then in this box, we have all the intercooler piping. Um, cost me like 80 bucks or something like that for intercooler piping, blue couplings, and some hose clamps. Blue cone filter. And then in this one, we have our dual stage uh, boost controller. So if I go ahead and take the contents out of here. So uh, it's an electronic boost controller, dual stage. You can set it up for um, two types or something like that haven't used one of these I use the uh, basically the manual one like the real cheap eBay ones now this is an, obviously I bought this on eBay too so but um, it's different it's, since it's electronic comes with a uh, toggle switch which instead I'm gonna be using a uh, blue one so I might paint the cover blue if that'll look good or not but yeah and then all these pieces and then also I got the blow-off valve pipe for the blow off valve so the only thing I'm really waiting for I believe is the blow off valve and I have everything else so uh, yeah it's basically all the stuff that I got I got a blue blow off valve which I'll also post a link in the description below so be sure to check all that out if you plan on doing uh, this way and building it how I am so uh, yeah but real quick I will go over the turbo modifications I had to do to get the uh, wastegate to work so uh, since it was an uh, internal wastegate, it was being a pain with trying to line this up and also position the compressor housing the direction that I need it. Because if it was facing forward, it would hit the radiator. If it was facing back, it would be um, aiming towards the engine. If it was facing up, the radiator hose was there. Um, so the only way I could get it would be facing down. And with the, the way the wastegate was, is I had to... This compressor housing outlet was in the way, so I just had to basically cut those off and uh, bolt that separately and angle it up a little bit because it couldn't clear the compressor housing the way the bolts are and everything. So I wish they would have done better at doing stuff like that, but I got it to work. I mean, it's definitely sealed like it was, and you know, I'll I can reinforce it later if I wanted to or whatever. But so that's what I had to do. I had to cut it in half. To position the wastegate upwards got it really tight and then the bottom half right there um, the same way so I cut it right here just basically straight down so uh, yeah that's basically what I did to get the uh, internal wastegate to work in the way that I need it so now it's facing straight down so I won't have any issues connecting that to the intercooler and then I also might need to buy some more uh, intercooler piping or turbo piping because I don't know if that's enough or not but I'm not gonna buy any more until I know for a fact 
So yeah, but I plan on installing the intercooler first and then running the intercooler piping to the intake. That's the first thing I want to be doing. But with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, start the preparation for the turbo on my O3 Lancer. All right guys, so I'm here at my Lancer, about to take some stuff off. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the battery so that way I can uh, get that and uh, soon put that in the trunk. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the negative cable first. So better loosen up that. Now the positive side. There we go. Right, so go ahead and remove that terminal and remove the battery. I right, so know that I have the battery removed from the vehicle. I'm now going to grab a flathead screwdriver and take off this, or loosen it up at least, this hose clamp that's on the throttle body itself. This throttle body. And there's this little rubber piece in here as well that I'll take off. All right, so now I got the battery removed. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the mass airflow sensor connector. Right, now I remove the mass airflow sensor so I can go ahead and just take this whole thing out of the vehicle. I got the battery removed. I got the short rim intake removed. Now I'm just going to take off the battery tray. All right, now that I have the battery as well as the intake out, now I'm going to go ahead and start removing off the manifold, getting everything prepped ready to go for the turbo. So first of all, I got to take off this uh, heat shield that's on here. Now that I got the bolts off, I'm going to now disconnect the O2 sensor. Alright, so now that I remove all the bolts and the O2 sensor, this should allow me to pop the shield off. Alright, just like that. Now that I have the heat shield off, I can go ahead and start moving the nuts that hold on the manifold to the engine. So to do that, I also have a 12 millimeter. I'll just take it off. All right, so uh, I finally got that nut off that was on that stud. It was being blocked by this uh, power steering pump bracket. So what I did was I went ahead and uh, drilled into it a little bit and then took out the belt sander and sanded it down so that way I have clearance. So if I ever have to take off the manifold and stuff, I don't gotta worry about taking off the power steering pump uh, bracket again. Um, Cause I was about to take off the power steering pump. That's why the uh, bolts are gone and some are loose and stuff. So I gotta tighten those back up. but. Um, yeah, I just wanted a quick way so that way if I ever had to like take out the manifold for whatever reason I can easily get to that nut that's on the back side of that. So that's how I tackled that problem. I also forgot the turbo manifold. So here it is. Um, it was left inside the engine bay. Wasn't thinking about it. Had to make a modification to it though because it was at like a 45 degree angle and I basically cut it off right where you see the welds cut off in that angle and then uh, basically flipped it around because it was flipped the other way and flipped it around to make it a uh, 90 degree angle from the manifold and then welded it back up so that's what I had to do also for the manifold that I bought so chances are you'll have to do the same otherwise the turbo was running straight into the radiator so that was another problem I had to tackle but I got it done so after I did that and everything though I test fitted the uh, turbo and it was still getting in the way of the radiator fan so I took the radiator fan out and it was getting basically in the way of it so what I'm gonna do and to get it out I had to take off the top radiator hose and basically unplug the main portion the main cable and it then it pulled right out after I unloosened uh, this bolt and then there's a bolt over there and that's all I had to really do oh probably that bolt too but anyway so the plan is I'm gonna cut this in half and only use the driver's side radiator fan. It was like the same setup that the Eclipse was on and it still should uh, cool off the radiator when I'm uh, sitting still and idle. But that's the plan for right now. I'm also go I'm going to keep the other half though just in case if there is enough room then I can stick it back on. But uh, yeah, so I'm basically going to keep this side and then basically just cut in the middle using my saw and just cut straight down the middle and get rid of 
this fan entirely and then just rock the one side and then yeah it should still cool everything so that's the uh, plan for that yeah so i'm basically ready to start the turbo install so uh yeah this is just basically a preparation video of the steps that i took to get ready for the turbo install and for the battery um as of now i'm putting it in the trunk but uh, we'll see when the turbo's in. So if you like this video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Be sure to check the link in the video below um, for the part list or for the parts that's going to be on there in the description. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video of when I get time to install the front-mounted intercooler. All right, yeah, peace.